Oh boy, what a day in Ohio. So, City Hall in Springfield, Ohio is closed after bomb threat. The city said that multiple facilities had received the email threat. Bro, things are going crazy over here. Like, after the debate and, you know, they were talking about the immigration issue with the Haitians in Springfield, Ohio. Now we're getting bomb threats in a few of their government buildings. I was doing some research as well and let me see... You know, there was this picture going on online. Um, I found a Reddit post that it wasn't even taken in Cleveland. It was actually Columbus, so I wanted to verify that and guess what it was actually taken in columbus ohio it was taken on cleveland avenue in columbus ohio bro like this is the exact same house the exact same houses you can see right here in the picture right there you can see the exact same houses over here damn Anyways, let's see what Ben Shapiro had to say about that. Vice presidential candidate and senator from Ohio, J.D. Vance, before. It turns out that when you have a town of 60,000 people and it's inundated with 20,000 Haitian immigrants, that might actually have a real impact on the social services in the city, on the culture of the city. Like these, these are very real things. You don't have to go to they're killing cats and eating them or stealing neighborhood pets or whatever. So yesterday on the Internet, there was this bizarre story that got blown all out over the Internet. This is what happens about... Haitian immigrants supposedly eating cats or something. Haitian immigrants going to the park and picking geese out of the pond and eating them. Apparently, there's no evidence of that. So the Springfield police have said, yeah, that's not, that's not a thing. We have no reports of pets being stolen, for example. There was a social media post originally from a Springfield Facebook group that went viral in recent days, according to the Springfield News Sun. The original poster did not cite first-hand knowledge of an incident. Instead, they claimed their neighbor's daughter's friend had lost her cat and found it hanging from a branch at a Haitian neighbor's home, being carved up to be eaten. The poster also claimed that rangers and police told them they had been doing it at Snyder Park, too, with ducks and geese. The Springfield police were like, yeah, that didn't happen. Okay, so, but you don't have to go there. You don't have to go there. This is the part where, again, don't get distracted by dumb, shiny objects if you are a Republican. The reality is that the residents of Springfield, Ohio, are pretty clearly frustrated with the situation over there, because it turns out that simply importing hundreds of thousands of people from a nation with a culture very different from America on the basis of temporary protected status, giving them TPS status, is a very, very bad idea. Here, for example, is one member of the Springfield, Ohio community complaining to the city commission this is in August. It is so unsafe. I have men that cannot speak English in my front yard screaming at me, throwing mattresses in my front yard, throwing trash in my front yard, and I can't. I Look at me, I weigh 95. Just so you guys know, when people are under a TPS or temporary protection status, they are actually allowed to have social security and employment as well. So just keep that in mind. Five pounds, I couldn't defend myself if I had to. My husband is elderly, and last night, after living in this home for 45 years, he said, Noel, guess what? It's time to pack up and move. He said, we can't do this anymore. He said, it's killing both of us mentally. I don't understand what you expect of us as citizens. And that is the question, right? That's the question. We'll get some more on this topic in a moment. For a fact, it is veered into oncoming traffic and rammed into a school bus on the first day of class, killing an 11-year-old boy and injuring 23 other children. Soon, it emerged the driver of the minivan was not a longtime resident, but one of thousands of immigrants from Haiti who had recently settled in the area. He was driving with a foreign license not valid in Ohio. The stage was set for another fraught chapter in the debate over immigration in America. This one magnified because J.D. Vance, the state's junior senator, would soon become the Republican vice presidential nominee. Haitians were new to the region. During the last census in 2020, a little more than 58,000 people lived in Springfield, a town at the crossroads of America that had fallen on hard times and shed population as opportunity slipped away. 
but has changed dramatically in recent years as a boom in manufacturing and warehouse jobs attracted a swelling wave of immigrants, mainly from Haiti. City officials estimate as many as 20,000 Haitians have arrived, most of them since the pandemic. At the first city commission meeting after the bus crash, angry residents packed the chambers and demanded answers. How do you know we aren't getting criminal and, criminals and rapists, said a man in a blue Harley Davidson t-shirt. Who can stop them from coming here? Had they been screened? Were they going to use their driver's licenses to vote? The city manager, Brian Heck, explained the Haitians were lawfully in the country. And the police chief, at Allison Elliott, said Haitians were not responsible for the city's years-long struggle with crimes such as retail theft. But nothing could quell the outrage. By the way, they were only in the country legally because of Kamala Harris. Here is a flashback of Kamala Harris bragging about extending temporary protected status to over 100,000 Haitian immigrants. That is why, also, starting with our administration, we gave TPS, temporary protected status, to Haitian migrants, 55,000. And then more recently, we extended temporary protected status to over 100,000 Haitian migrants for that very reason, that they need support, they need protection. Okay, so she is taking credit for all of this. Now, the New York Times is trying to play it that these immigrants have revitalized the region. The reality is that that's not true. The reality is that if you open a manufacturing plant in Springfield, Ohio, there are a lot of people who are not immigrants who will come and take those jobs. It is not that you need Haitian immigrants to come take those jobs unless they're undercutting the wage base or something in Springfield, Ohio. And there, there are tons of people in the United States. This is a country of 340 million people. You don't need people who are given TPS, 20,000 of them, to suddenly show up in Springfield, Ohio, from a country that does not have a ton in common culturally with the United States, any country that does not share a ton in common culturally with the United States, and just inundate a town, and suddenly become overnight one quarter of the city's population. Right? Of course, that's going to create social friction and a massive draw on social services, which is what you have seen. According to the New York Times, the community health clinic saw a 13-fold increase in Haitian patients between 2021 and 2023, from 115 to 1,500, overwhelming its staff and budget. Again, there are serious downsides to all of this. Haitians had social security numbers and work permits thanks to a federal program that offered them temporary protection in the United States. Some have been living for years in places like Florida, where there's a thriving Haitian community. Now, again, there's nothing wrong with immigrating to the United States legally. Not only that, if you're coming here to work, you're coming here to be part of the American dream, I'm all for it. But there's no way to screen people at the southern border. When you just give people temporary protected status and you let them into the country without any vetting, without knowing what their educational level is, what their skill set is, are they going to be a draw on public services, what their family structure is, no country worth its salt does that. That is the point. And pretending these issues don't exist doesn't make them go away. Apparently, at the Rocking Horse Community Health Center, a federally subsidized clinic that does not turn anyone away, a surge in Haitians has caused a consultation that normally takes 15 minutes to take as long as 45 because of the language barrier. We lost productivity. We had a huge burnout of staff, says Yamimi Tigala, the chief executive officer. This is not sustainable. And by the way, again, it is not just a bunch of like hard right Republicans who are objecting to all of this. Here is the mayor and city manager saying the city services in Springfield, Ohio, are collapsing. This is like a couple of months ago. Well, what we've seen is just such a quick increase of our population over the last five years. You know, like you said, up to 15 to 20,000 immigrants have come across uh, and into our community. Uh, this has overwhelmed our safety services and caused great concern for our community. You know, when we see a 25% increase over a three year period, we're a community, we do not have the capacity to, to sustain that. And it's taxing our infrastructure. It's taxing public safety, it's taxing our schools, it's taxing health care. We do not have the capacity to sustain it. And uh, without additional federal assistance or support, um, again, communities like Springfield will fail. There, those are the people in charge. And those are people, well, that Brian Heck, the person I quoted a second ago, that last person is Brian Heck saying that the community resources are going to fail. That is a person who is trying to assure citizens that the people who are there were not there illegally. So these are not like rabid right-wingers who hate immigrants or anything like this. These are real problems that have been facilitated by the Biden administration, and everyone knows it. I mean, hell, Alejandro Mayorkas, literally yesterday, the head of the Department of Homeland Security, he says that you have to stop criticizing immigration in strong terms because people will die if you do that. Well, you know what I noticed? I noticed you lost 300,000, apparently, immigrant minors. What happened to those people? How about the people who have died as a result of illegal immigrant criminals being allowed into the country? We can name many of those people like Lake and Riley. 
Here's Alejandro Mayorkas doing his shtick. As the son of Jewish and Cuban immigrants and of a mother who survived the Holocaust, um, what do you think, what goes through your mind when you hear Donald Trump, the former president, say that immigrants are poisoning the blood of the country? So I'm going to detach it from the individual, as I must, uh, given um, uh, legal constraints. I, I abide scrupulously to the Hatch Act requirements. That rhetoric that I have heard um, espoused by people um, is odious. I don't know what to say. People have died because of that rhetoric. Um, uh, my mother's family, um, uh, her father's eight brothers, parents, sister, died because of that rhetoric. Okay, give me a, give me a break. I'm sorry, give me a break. This is the shtick. And then she's trying to claim she's a border hawk, Kamala Harris. She's not a border hawk and everybody knows it. Crazy, crazy indeed.